Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interesting life.com. At the moment you're joining me on board good old Narrowboat Tilly, but let's have a walk down the towpath and get a few supplies, maybe a nice little blue cheese bomb for our dinner, and just generally enjoy a little walk down to Langoflin. So you can see where we're moored up here, one of the very few places on the last few miles heading towards Langothlin where there's actual mooring rings that you can use and I wanted to really just put this video together to demonstrate just how narrow the canal is and what have you. Uh, of course I wanted to throw in a couple of these beautiful sunny cliffs of this area of the canal as typically after all of these great days we'd had that were very unexpected I ended up doing the proper in-depth video look at the canal up here on a nice grey overcast drizzly day. Um, I thought I'd just throw in a little bit for people to pause on if they want to read the sign properly but basically the canal's going to get very narrow up here as you're about to see and this is where just after that bridge it starts to narrow down to this little channel here where it's definitely considering you're taking a boat that's nearly seven foot wide down these places it's definitely not wide enough for two <laughs> we'll say that at the very least you can see Dinistran Castle on top of the hill there and you've got this little lay-by which I've always thought is almost an amusing little feature of the canal to actually have a proper cut-in solidly built lay-by because it's so narrow obviously you need to let boats pass if they do end up coming face to face one of the great things again about this stretch of canal is it's literally on the side of a hill running down the Vale of Langothlin into, well, Langothlin itself. So, so many places you can look over from the towpath or from the boat and just see straight down the valley and the River Dee and all the rest of it. The one real shame, oh, and I love this. I love little things like this. You might have seen in other videos where I show like roots of trees that are all being exposed or working their way through walls and stuff. But, um... I'm not sure what I was going to say there. Oh yeah, it's a shame that you've got this road that runs so close to the canal in the last couple of miles up to Langothlin, as it's quite a busy and quite a loud road really. But ultimately, considering how rural so much of the rest of the canal for goodness knows, like 40, 50 miles down to Nantwich is, it's, uh, it's something that I can't really complain about. Again, looking from a lift bridge and then turning your head and being able to see the ruins of Dennis Brand Castle. Fantastic stuff. Um, this is the very top end now as we're heading into Langothlin and you can see the water levels drop down quite a lot because there's work going on and the bridge is being blocked off and emptied which we'll have a look at in a second but I just wanted to show you in the water then just so you could see how clear it is well there's no boats going around churning up all the mud but also how shallow it is especially considering that the water level is down I don't know six inches maybe Again, another sign here if anybody wants to pause it, for any uh, English or Welsh speakers there, or if you want to learn. <laughs> and these are the points here that you have to pay for to more up on, where you've got uh, water and electricity just behind those little flaps. And again, this is one of the most famous places up at the Langothlin, how extremely narrow the canal is once again, but this wonderful old castle style building that looks straight over the village that in just a second we'll come back to and have a look down at the view of the village from here. Village, town, I'm not sure off the top of my head. I'd say it might be a town actually, but that's all technical stuff. Um, here is the bridge, as I say. You can tell that it is definitely, definitely closed by the way that it is totally built up with uh, mud and dirt there to stop the water obviously rushing in and it's got a pump just pumping a little bit of water that is getting through into the rest of the canal and this is the top end of the Langothlin everybody this is the final basin and turning point and you'll see in just a second as the camera carries on panning around the canal does carry on past here and that would take you up to the Horseshoe Falls which I'll leave a link in the description to a video from the Horseshoe Falls that actually feeds water into the canal but it's definitely not the sort of place you want to take a narrow boat. Those are, that's for the horse boat. And again, this is what I was saying. This is the view from up by the castle building. Now, I'm not sure what this chef's all about. He's been stood there every time I've walked up here trying to offer people whatever he's got on his tray. But I don't think he's gathered that nobody really walks along the roofs. <laughs> oh, that, was, that was a terrible attempt at humour there. Anyway, on that note, let's get down and onto that bridge that wagon's going across. And 
enjoy the view and I'll wrap things up and say please do check out my other videos for loads more boat stuff and scenery and the great outdoors in general. Check out my short boaty books in the links in the description and add me on Facebook for pictures of this sort of thing too. But until the next time, keep it boot worthy, keep it boat worthy and of course farewell. <laughs>